Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was the overpowered guardian of galaxy, movie? Naruto look around the small compartment of the ship that he was in. After woking up he meet a small wooden creature called Groot. Not longer after introducing himself to Naruto, the rest of crew came to Medic Bay. After giving him a look, Naruto told them his story. You expect us to believe in this bullcrap? A rakan like creature asked with laughed. Don't be like that rocket. A human said looking down at his teammate. Considering what we went through recently is a proof that everything is possible. Maybe or maybe not. Green-skinned female said with shrug. But for some reason, I don't think he's lying to us. You shouldn't be so naive Gamora. Green-skinned male with tattoos reminded. Gamora. Rolled her eyes and shaked her head. But let us believe he's not lying. What are we going to do with him? Quill. Dunno Drax. I mean he's human like me, so I'm not going to abond him. Quill, said with chuckle. I'm not that much an asshole. I am Groot. Groot said with pitch voice. Yeah, so what you say we can trust him? Rocket asked with snort. Just because you do doesn't mean a we have to. Oi, I'm still here, Dadbeo, Naruto shouted, causing them to flinch. Geez, I told you my story, so to be fair you should too. Like I said, we don't have to trust you, Rocket reminded with hiss. Easy Rocket, remember that I'm the leader, Quill reminded, while Rocket scowled. Okie it's fair or not if you know a thing or few. It all started when I was looking for an ascient artifact, he continued and Naruto listened, and that's why we are known as Guardians of Galaxy. Really, wow, you're kinda like space version of my Avengers, Naruto said with smile on his face. I quest. I'm wrapping my head around the idea that you survived Nuke, Quill said honestly, causing Naruto to smirk. Let's just say that gods are in my favor, Naruto replied, a sudden realization came to his mind. That's bring the question. For us, you've been out for four days, Gamora said, bringing his attention. On earth, it was month, Quill said slowly and Naruto noted. I see, Naruto said quickly before getting up from medic bed. We can drop you on earth if you want, Quill offered, but Blonde shook his head. No, not until I'll get back in shape and learn where infinity stones are, Naruto said surprising everyone. What, is it that strange? No, but, why are you after the stone? Drax asked curiously. I can't let Thanos get his hands of them, he replied, again surprising everyone. That's quite a mission, why do you want to stop him? Rocket asked, now he instrusted. Well, for starters he evil and wants to take control over the universe, Naruto replied with shrug. Also he's the reason why my parents are dead. Uh, I'm, I mean we're sorry to hear that, Quill said while looking down. No, it's okay, like I told you, I'm pretty old and I got over it, Naruto said with weak chuckle. Anyway, where are we? We are near Hoxon Station. A planet with barely any life on it, Gamora said to Naruto. You wanted to get back into shape so this could a good place. You can breath there too. Neat, but what about you guys? Naruto asked. You'll drop me there or will you stay with me for a while? We have to refill the supplies, so I'll stay there for a while, Quill said with smile. Few days should be a knot, Naruto assured. Is that a knot for you? Depends. Hoxon ain't best place to stay for too long, Rocket said with dry chuckle. Me and Groot been there once, good bars, but too many criminals. Gotta be careful around there. Well, Hoxon it is, Naruto said with grin. Man, my bones and organs feel sore. It hurts too. Really, no wonder, when we found you you're floating in space, Drax said with laughed. Can't believe you are still alive after that. Okay. We should head to the Hoxon, Quill said and everyone agreed. Naruto stay here until we call you. Rest for a bit, Oki. Okay. Yeah sure, Naruto noted and sat back on the bed. Everyone beside Groot walk out of the medic bay, leaving the two alone. Say Groot, you want to get back to being an adult? I am Groot, Groot said looking up to Naruto. Blonde chuckled and patted Groot head with his hand. I am Groot, yeah, you're kinda right. Being kid isn't that bad. Naruto agreed with Wooden Creature. So what is Hoxon that scary? I am Groot. 
Groot said as shiver run down his wooden spine. Really? Well once I'll get rid of that soreness there won't be much to stop me. Naruto said with grin, causing Groot to smile. Let's see how my chakra is doing. Blonde sat in lotus position and clapped his hands together and closed his eyes. For next couple of minutes, Naruto was sitting and sensing everything around him. My chakra is as large as Biju now, at least between Rokubi and Nanabi. Also I can sense other energies other than chakra. Amazing, he opened his eyes revealing his Rinnegan. I am Groot, Groot said, while pointing his tiny finger at his eyes. Ah oh, sorry, it must look freaky to you. Do you have any mirror here? Naruto asked with smile, as Groot noted. He pointed at one, lying on the box near them. Naruto picked it up and examined it for a second. It was a little strange looking mirror, but whatever. He looked at the mirror and saw his Rinnegan. Weird, my Rinnegan felt much more powerful back in purgatory. But then again, I just woke up. I'm still weak after being in space for some time. With that, Naruto watched as his eyes switched back to Eternal Mangeku Sharingan, Sharingan and then to his pitch black eyes. Shrugging, Blonde put back the mirror and decided to lie on the bed. Groot drop on the bed and lie with Naruto. Then something else hit Naruto. He felt emptiness inside of the seal on his stomach. He rubbed it as his eyes saddened. He forgot that Kurama was left on earth with the rest. He only hoped that Fuzzball was safe with the Avengers. Then he thought of Wanda. He tear up a little, while thinking about her and to be born child. He focus on them so much that he didn't realize that he was called by Guardians of the Galaxy. I am Groot. Groot said, cutting Naruto attention. He looked at the creature and noted. After getting up he looked at himself and sighed. I can't go out like that. Naruto said to himself. He was dressed in some white shirt and swaggy pants. Even in space there was bad taste in clothing. Groot are there some cloths. Suddenly someone throw a pair of cloths at him. It's good thing that we have the same size. Quill said with smile. Be thankful that I'm also giving you my cool cloak. He added throwing a red cloak to him. Thanks. I mean it, Naruto said and Quill noted, heading out. After quick change, Naruto pick up Groot and put him on his shoulder. He then head out toward the exit of the ship. Naruto walked down on the ramp to see guardians waiting for him. Whoa. Dude, this is just a docking bay, Rocket said shaking his head. Man, don't get this excited. Well I was excited when I saw my first dock, Quill said with cheeky grin, causing Rocket to sigh. Okay then, me and Gamora will take Naruto somewhere to stretch out. You and Drax will go and refill our supplies. Understood. Yeah, yeah whatever. Rocket said, while walking away with Drax. Give him time, he'll like you in no time. Gamora assured with tiny smile. Anyway, there are few spots outside of station that are available for public. You might try to train there. Okay then, let's go. Naruto said with smile as they walk out of the docking bay. Outside of the station, closing square bracket, so what do you think, Naruto, Quill asked, while glancing at the blonde. It was an open space with good view at the rest of the planet. Even if it was mainly rocks and mountains, there was nobody around, which make Naruto felt easier. On their way, Naruto saw a bunch of aliens who looked creepy and weird. It's cool. I can feel energy all around me which is good. This place is good from my jutsu. Naruto said earning confusion from Gamora, Groot and Quill. It's a technique which should allow me to heal my body and get rid of pain and soreness. He take off his cloak, shirt and throw it to Quill who caught it. What are you planning to do? Gamora asked curiously, as Naruto sat down on the ground. Naruto then formed a tiger seal and closed his eyes. Byakugo no in Hayakugo seal, he whispered, as a rhombus-like marking formed in the middle of his chest. My chakra control is still fine. Now then, Sozo Sei, ninja art. Myotic regeneration, suddenly Naruto body glowed in faint red color and it let out steam. What did you did? Gamora asked, amazed by the marks that spread on Naruto torso. I've speed up my healing factor, Naruto explained. Normally, I'd wait a few days to allow my body to heal itself but, I don't want to waste your time here. Seems like an useful technique, Quill said with grin. Do you use it often? No, it's the first time I'm actually using it, Naruto replied. 
And it's not perfect. The body's cell division is forcibly stimulated by proteins, reconstructing all organs and all tissues making up the human body. The technique itself does not regenerate the old cells, rather it hastens the creation of new ones through division. If this technique is used, a body whose vital organs are so gravely injured that it cannot bear it any longer will be instantly restored to its uninjured state. But you said that it's not perfect. Gamora stated and Naruto sighed. I'm getting to that. He said, a bit annoyed. However, a body's cells can only split a certain number of times in a lifetime, and by speeding up this process, users of this technique are basically shortening their natural lifespan. I see, so you shorten your lifespan? Quill asked. Barely, I wasn't that injured. Naruto replied. Beside you kept me alive, so my cells start to slowly heal my body. I just speed up the process. So you're back in your shape? Gamora asked, crossing her arms. You can say that, I need to see if my other techniques work properly. Naruto said with smile, while getting back on his feet. Let's start with something simple, Henj no Jutsu, he exclaimed and in poof of smoke, Naruto turned into Gamora. Dope, wow, you look like her, Quill said in total awe. That's ho, I mean impressive. Oh, that's nothing. Naruto assured with grin, as he returned to normal. Now Kawarimi no Jutsu, he switched place with Rock and appeared next to Groot. Now, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, four clones appeared next to Naruto, causing Quill, Gamora and Groot to gasp in awe. Seems like my basic techniques work perfectly. Wanna see something cool? Depends on how large it is. Gamora said as Naruto clones poof out of the existence. Might be, but don't worry. Let's bring a little life to this place. Naruto said as he clapped his hands together. Mokuden. Jukai Koden. Suddenly ground beneath their feet start to shake and trees spat out of the ground. Whoa, now I see why Groot like you so much. Quill said, gaping like a fish. He look around himself and so Gamora. So you can make trees grow from the ground. A lot more than that. Naruto assured. He waved series of hand seals and spat a medium fire bullet. Kaden. Enden. Fire bullet hit the rock and exploded. Well, it seems like I don't really need training. I bet Rocket and Drax will be impressed when they see what you can do. Gamora said with small smirk. So how about we get back? Quill offered and everyone noted. Better to get out of here, before someone see those trees. Yeah, let's get out off here. Naruto agreed, as Quill throw him his cloths. Gamora pick up Groot and they rushed back to station. Rocket and Drax entered a bar called, Under the Sky. It was one of the bars that Rocket knew. He was here with Groot a couple of times. After refilling their supplies, the two wanted to have small drink. The two teammates wore black cloaks, so nobody could recognize them. They sat by the bar and ordered two drinks. So what do you think about Blondie? Rocket asked, while glancing at his drink. I'm not sure, I can't find myself to not like him. Drax said with shrug, surprising his Rakan friend. But, finding him surviving in the space still bother me. What about you? I can't believe that Quill and Groot trust him that much. Rocket said honestly. We barely know him and we're helping him like we're some kind of charity. Well, we saved the galaxy, so we're good guys. Good guys are helping people. Drax reasoned and took a sip of his drink. We saved the galaxy like not so long ago. Rocket retorted. Before that were criminals to public. He took the final sip of this drinks and shook his head. Hey. Someone called and both Rocket and Drax turned their head around. Are those guys from the Nova Corp? How were they called again? Guardians of the galaxy, right? It was big alien with gray colored skin. He had similar tattoos like Drax, but with orange ink. He had four eyes, arms and spider-like legs. Alien had a shotgun on his back and two blades on his belt. He was wearing black cargo jacket and armor on his legs. Ah man, Rocket said as both turned toward alien creature fully. Hey, listen you must have mistaken us for someone else. Really? Sorry, but I know that your friend is Drax the Destroyer. He said pointing his claw at Drax, who narrowed his eyes at him. And you're Rocket the Rackin. We don't like cops around here. Oi, we're not with those guys. Rocket snarled. Just because we saved Galaxy doesn't mean we're cops. Well, it doesn't matter. 
I'm Braddon the Hunter. Braddon said with smirk. And you have nice bounty on your heads. Drax the Destroyer 2 million, while Rocket the Rack and minus 1 million. We'd like to collect them. The rest of the gang rose up from their seats and walked toward the bar. I quest, we won't get away from this that easily. Rocket said, placing his hand on his gun. Drax noted and slowly reached for his blades. Then the hell broke loose. Drax jumped at the two first guys on his right and stabbed them in the leg or arm. Rocket did a small back flip and hid behind the bar. He started shooting it in all directions. Some of the goons had to flip the table and take the cover. Drax quickly pick up some table and block incoming plasma blasts. He moved back toward the bar and swift fly throw table toward Gradon who blasted it into pieces. Well this is crappy situation. Drax said, causing Rocket to snort. Really, because it's my fault that you have high bounty, Rocket said, causing Drax to snarl. You have high bounty too, he snapped at Rocket. Don't blamche for everything. Whatever, I have another bar to cross from the list now. Anyway, we have two options. Rocket said to his teammate. Option number one, we wait for the rest of the team. Or option number two, I'll throw my gas, smoke grenade and we'll sneak out of the bar to the ship. He explained and pull a small grenade from his pocket. I think we should go with option number two, Drax said and Rocket agreed. Rocket pressed the button and throw the grenade. Suddenly grenade exploded causing smoke to cover the entire bar. Drax and Rocket hold their breath as they heard everyone start to cough. They quickly moved toward the exit until Rocket bump into someone. He look up to see Grandon in front of him. He smirked and point his guns at Rocket and Drax. Then the two saw a pair of hands grabbing Grandon and snap his neck. It was Naruto with his sherigan glowing. I quest that I'm even with the two of you, Naruto said with smirk on his face. Come on, let's get out of here, Rocket and Drax noted and rushed out of the bar. Molino, few minutes later. Closing square bracket. Okay, that could gone better. Quill said with sigh. Tell me about it. Naruto agreed. What the hell happened there? He asked, as they left the station. Nah, it was just small misunderstanding. Rocket said with laughed. Really, what was it about? Gamora asked, crossing her arms. It was about the bounties that we still have. Drax answered, causing Rocket to snort. Dude, why did you had to say that? Rocket asked, blacking at Drax who avoided the eye contact. It doesn't matter now, I mean we have what we came for right? Naruto asked and everyone looked at him. What, did I said something wrong? Nothing wrong per se, Quill said. But we barely know you. It's been like what, two hours? Rocket asked and Guardians noted. Not to be rude, but you're not in our team. Gamora finished, causing Naruto to sweat drop. Hey, I saved both Rocket and Drax lives, Naruto countered by pointing at Rakan and green-skinned alien. Doesn't this makes me at least a candidate? Well, Quill paused, glancing at Rocket and Drax. I don't really mind being a candidate. We're technically even now, we saved you, you saved us. Fair and square. Are we really considering him as candidate? Rocket asked in disapproval. Wow. What did I ever do to you dude? Naruto asked Rocket, who didn't reply. At least thanks would be nice. Snapping the guy's neck is not a knot in my book. Rocket said, causing Naruto and the rest to roll his eyes. Thanks, Naruto. Drax said surprising everyone. No problem, Drax. Naruto said with smile. So what next? We usually wait for anyone to hire us. Quill explained, putting on his headphones. Take some time, so just go find some place to relax. Naruto shrugged his shoulder and went back to the medic bay. He sat on the bed and saw that Groot followed him. He smiled and helped little guy to get him on the bed. I am Groot. Groot asked and Naruto noted. Yeah, I saved them from some bounty hunter. Naruto said with chuckle. Wanna see something cool? He offered and Groot noted. Naruto bit his thumb and marked his palm. Then he want into series of hand seals. I hope this will work, Kuchio's no jutsu, he put his hand on the medic bed and seal spread from his palm. Groot took few steps back to see what Naruto did. He summoned medium orange toad on the bed. Huh, where am I? Toad asked looking around. He turned around to see Naruto. Wait, you're Naruto. 
Yeah, one and only. Naruto said with grin. Everyone thought that you're dead. Toad said. My name is Garakosu. Where have you been Naruto? Everyone was worried that you died. Yeah, but do me a favor and don't tell anyone that I'm still alive. Naruto said, causing Toad to raise his non-existing eyebrow. I need to do few things first. But you can tell the rest of Toads though. I need to make sure that Infinity Stones are under highest protection first. Try to get in touch with Wanda and see how she and Child is doing. Can you do that for me? Sure, but you really should let me inform the Avengers. Garakosu said with sigh. It'd make things easier for them. I know that, but making sure that they'll be safe is more important to me right now. That's all thank you. Naruto said and Toad vanish in poof of smoke. Groot looked at him with wide eyes, causing Naruto to chuckle. Well, I can summon Toads. Even bigger than this ship. Hey Naruto, we have new mission. Come to the deck. Naruto smiled and picked up Groot. They head to the deck and saw that they went into hyperspace of some sort. So where are we going? Naruto asked, glancing at Quill. To Sovereign. Apparently there is some type of tentacle monster called a Bilisk that wants to eat their batteries, Quill explained. People of that planet, have golden skin and hair, eyes too. Kinda creepy if you ask me. Yeah, it does. I actually fought with giant octopus back on Earth. Naruto said with tired sigh. At least I hope it is challenging. Nothing we can't handle. Rocket said as they went out of hyperspace. But it'd be good to have backup in just in case. Quill said to Naruto with smile. One hour later, closing square bracket, such a big help you said. Rocket said pointing at Naruto sitting in lotus position. Well Abilisk is not here yet. Quill said to Rocket, who snorted. He looked at his radar and then at Naruto. Are you, meditating or something? You can say that. Naruto said without opening his eyes. He already had his sage mode on. I'm maintaining sage chakra in my body. Sage cha, what? Gamora asked instrusted. It's extra source of my power. Naruto explained. It doubles all my skills. But there are few drawbacks. I have to stay still to collect natural energy from around me. Can you teach me that? Drax asked surprising everyone. No, you need chakra for that and only Quill have it. Naruto said and Quill eyes winded. You mean that I can do stuff like you? Quill asked eagerly causing Naruto to chuckle. Sorry, but it's too late for you. Naruto said and Quill pouted. You need to be kid, because that's when chakra network is very active. Once you'll reach certain age, you won't be able to mold chakra. That's so unfair. I didn't know that humans could do that. Quill said and Naruto opened his eyes. There are many things you don't know. Naruto said and looked up. It's coming. Quill raised his eyebrow and looked at the radar. Showtime a holes, Star Lord exclaimed looking around. A billisk will be any second now. Also Rocket, I'm useless here. Naruto asked, causing Rocket to glare at him. I'm sorry, but I'm not the one who brought loudspeakers to play a freaking songs. Hey don't look at me. It's Quill's fault that he loves music. At that Quill glanced over to Rocket and gave him the look. No, seriously this is very important. Quill said and Rocket. Yeah, sure it is important. Rocket agreed, while winking. Rocket, I'm serious this isn't a time. Quill said seriously. Stop winking. Don't you realize that he was sarcastic? Naruto asked with sweat drop. Anyway let's get ready. I can't wait to kill that thing. Gamora said preparing her rifle. Quill looked at her surprised. I thought your thing was swords. Quill said, while scratching the back of his head. We've been hired to stop interdimensional beast that wants to those batteries and you think I'll stop it with sword. Gamora retorted, causing Quill to bit his lips. Well swords were your things and guns were mine. But I quest we both doing guns now. He paused and looked at the sky. I just didn't know that. Drax, why aren't you wearing rocket air wings? Gamora asked, as Drax glared at her. It hurts. He replied shortly. I have sensitive nipples. At that rocket lauded, while Naruto was able to stop himself. This team was weirder than his own. Everyone then hear Groot growling and look at what was going on. He was beating crap out of little dinosaur-like things. We're not looking funny at you, Groot. 
Rocket assured and everyone heard loud noise coming from the sky. Small portion of the clouds glowed in blue and green, until a large pink octopus-like creature jumped from it. Well that's intense, any plan on killing the beast? Quill asked, while avoiding tentacles. I'm trying to think of something, Naruto shouted to Quill, but holding this slowly getting too much for me. Geez, Blondie hold him in place, Rocket shouted, while shooting the beast. He barely got hit if Naruto clone didn't stop one of the tentacles. It's not so easy you stupid Rakan, Naruto shouted as he and his clones were trying to hold the beast. Even in sage mode the thing is strong, close to full biju. Stop calling me Rakan, Rocket barked. Stop arguing, we have to kill the beast and collect the payment, Gamora shouted at the two. Did any of you know where Groot is, Rocket asked. It's not safe for him to be here. I think I saw him dancing after he turned on the loudspeakers, Naruto replied. I'm getting tired of this. One of the Naruto's jumped away and clapped his hand together. Senpo. Maya Yinman. Suddenly four red tori fell from the sky and pinned five out of eight tentacles. End of song. Ha ha ha. What a fight. Drax commented with laughed. But his skin can't be pierced. So, I need to kill it from the inside. What are you talking about? Gamora asked, being closer to Drax. He just laughed like a maniac and charged at the beast with his knives. Drax, stop, it was too late as Drax was eaten by the beast. Even Quill took off his helmet and looked in shock of what just happened. What is he doing? He asked, while landing next to Gamora. Naruto suddenly shunshined to them as well. Is he a Moran or something? Naruto asked in disbelief. He thought that skin was too thick to pierce from the outside, Gamora replied in annoyed angry tone. That doesn't make any sense, Naruto said, while shaking his head. The level of thickness is the same as on the outside, Quill exclaimed, while Gamora rolled her eyes. I figured it out myself, she said giving him a look. There is a cut on his neck, Naruto said, after analyzing the beast. Rocket, make him look up. You're not my boss, Rocket said, causing Quill to sigh. Do as he say, I'm joining you. Quill said, putting his helmet back and flying toward his teammate. Naruto left hand was engulfed in pure electricity, as both Quill and Rocket were cutting beast attention. He smirked and charged toward the beast. He jumped, pierced beast wound and run toward his stomach. He quickly got away as the beast hit the ground dead. It's over, Naruto said with smile, before glancing at his slimy hand. Ew, where is Drax? He asked wiping his hand. Everyone walked to the beast and saw that Drax crawled from his stomach laughing. Ha ha ha, I did it, I vanquished the beast, he exclaimed, while Groot throw a seed and hit his head. What? Half hour later, Sovereign Palace. Closing square bracket, we're thankful to you guardians, Aisha said, boring her eyes into Naruto. I see you have new team member. Um well, I'm technically only tagging along for now. Naruto said with slight bow, causing Aisha to smile. I see it in you, you're related to, Otsutsuki race, aren't you? Aisha asked, as Naruto eyes winded. For a second his eyes turned into Rinnegan, before becoming pitch black again. So I was right, interesting I did. But you appear to be mostly human, just like Star Lord. At that quill raised his eyebrow. What do you know about Otsutsuki clan? Naruto asked, taking small step toward Aisha. That they're powerful like Star Lord race. Aisha replied and Naruto get confused. Wasn't Quill human like him? I'm sorry, but your highness must be mistaken. Quill said, while raising his hand. I'm not mistaken, Star Lord. You have to look deep down into your heritage. Aisha advised and Quill looked down. What about our payment? Gamora asked Impentiant. Of course, bring her in. Aisha ordered and soon her guards brought a hooded figure. Guards push her down and took her hood off. Nebula, your adoptive sister if I remember, right? I hate you, Nebula barked at Gamora, who gave her blank stare. Yeah, that's her all right. Gamora, while picking up Nebula and slowly heading toward the exit. Family reunion, yay. Quill said, but he quickly shut up after Gamora gave him a look. Let's get out of here. We have nothing else to do. Rocket said and Drax agreed. Naruto and Quill glanced at Sovereign Quinn, 
bowed slightly and walked away. Hey Drax, want some batteries? He offered, showing the pairs of batteries that he stole. The lot it is Quill and Naruto joined them. Milano, half hour later. So what, you're both raised by Thanos? Naruto asked, as Gamora cuffed her adoptive sister. I doesn't concern you. Gamora hissed, while Naruto narrowed his Sharingan at her. Listen, if you know anything useful about Thanos, then I want to hear it. Naruto said seriously. I'm going to help you for now, but when the time comes I'll have to go and find Infinity Stones. Bah, like you can hide them from him. Nebula spat, while narrowing her eyes at the blonde. Don't worry, I have a way or two to hide them. Naruto assured, revealing his eternal Mangekyu and Rinnegan. I'll make sure that he won't use them. Please, you really think that those, scary, eyes will stop him? Nebula asked with snort. My eyes can do many things. Naruto promised with smirk. I can do almost anything I want. Suddenly alarms sounded throat and Naruto head to the deck. What's happening? Well, sovereign ships are after us, Quill explained. But why? We just saved their batteries. It may have something to do with Rocket stealing their batteries, Drax said, looking out of the window. Everyone snapped at Rocket. Dude, Rocket shouted at Drax, who glanced at him. Ah, right, I don't know why they are after us. Rocket didn't steal their batteries, Drax said quickly. What a mystery this is. Everyone sweat drop at Drax. I have an idea, give me a moment, Naruto said as he sat down on the ground and clapped his hands together. We don't have a moment, Rocket rushed, glancing at Naruto. Damn it, they hit one of our engines. Iso, Suzano, Naruto exclaimed activating his M's and partially covering Milano. Get us out of here. I'm doing this for the first time. Don't worry, I'm the best pilot in the universe, Bored Quill and Rocket said in unison. They looked at each other and snorted. Sorry Quill, but you'll have to let me do this one, Rocket said, switching piloting mode. No, I'm sorry Rocket, but I've been piloting this ship since I was 10, Quill said, switching the piloting mode. Beside it's your fault that we're in this mess. Shut the hell up. Naruto shouted. There is too many of them. Gamora informed. We won't be able to run away from them. Not unless we're going to do a hyper jump. Rocket said and everyone beside Naruto stare at him. We won't survive that. Quill yelled at Rocket. Not with the state that engine is right now. He added taking the wheel and moving away from the horde of ships. We gotta get back and give them those batteries back. I don't think that's an option anymore, Gamora said to Quill. There's gotta be some way to get out of this mess. There, Rocket said pressing few button, causing Guardian's eyes to wind it. Suddenly their ship was bowled toward the sea of stars in superb speed. Everything went white as Naruto focused control over his Suzano to cover the Guardians. Unno planet, some time later, closing square bracket, suddenly Naruto woke up, catching a deep breaths before coughing. He felt as his insides were screaming in pain. Slowly he formed tiger seal and his body glowed in faint red color. His body let out a small puff of steam, as he got up. He looked around him and his eyes winded in horror. The guardians, they were dead. The ship was in total mess and some parts cover in blood. He saw his new friend's bodies in pools of blood. Upon seeing their injured, Naruto knew that those were from landing on ground. They probably landed on their faces, Naruto thought. Then he heard a cry. He looked to his left and saw Groot sitting on the ground, crying loudly. He heard a noise from behind and saw Nebula getting out of the ruins of the ship. She glared at him and then noticed Gamora and the Guardians dead. What, it's impossible. Nebula said, almost in the whisper. She can't be dead, not like this. Naruto looked back at the Guardians and slowly get back on his feet. Damn it, Naruto said under his nose. Then sudden realization came OT his mind. The Rinnegan, of course, there is still a chance, Naruto exclaimed, cutting Nebula and Groot attention. I am Groot, Groot asked, wiping his tears. Yeah, just give me moment. It'll be my first time doing this sort of thing, Naruto said, as his eyes shifted to his Rinnegan. He crossed his fingers together and few clones pop out. They walk toward the guardians and slowly lift their bodies. Then they place them side by side, 
After that they vanish in poof of smoke. Naruto then clapped his hands together. He closed his eyes and start to focus. What are you trying to do? Nebula asked curiously, after witnessing Naruto clones. They're dead, so there is nothing you can do. Just you wait, Naruto said with smirk as he opened his eyes. His Rinnegan glowed in bright purple color as ground start to shake beneath them. Suddenly a circle of dark flames formed behind Guardian's bodies. Then a hideous head start to appearing, coming from the middle of circle. Nebula eyes winded and so did Groot's. Naruto smiled and exclaimed, Welcome, King of Hell. What is this hideous creature? Nebula asked, looking at the gaping face with eyes similar to Naruto's. With this, I'll restore their bodies and make them stronger than ever before, Naruto explained. So this will never happen again. After that I'll bring their souls from the pure world. I am Groot. Groot said in awe, as he saw King of Hell covering his friends with green light. He could feel that their bodies were being healed and becoming stronger. Can, you really do it? Nebula asked with slight disbelief. Naruto turned his head slightly, glaring at her with his Rinnegan. You just saw me summoning this hideous creature, Naruto said with deadpan. Are you really doubting me? At that Nebula closed her mouth and Naruto sighed. As King of Hell finished his healing, the inside of his mouth now glowed in deep green color. Four green orbs floated out of King of Hell mouth and went inside of the Guardian's bodies. Soon their eyes snap open and they start coughing. It is done, Naruto said after healing that three-tenths of his chakra left his body. It took left chakra than he thought it would. Good to see you alive again my friends. Now about you, he said turning toward Nebula. I am Groot. Groot exclaimed, jumping and landing on Rocket's stomach. Ow, don't do that. Rocket said to Groot, who was crying into his chest. Hey, what's the matter? My head, feels like I've been hit Drax for over an hour. Quill whined, nursing his head. That was, most unpleasant. Gamora said, while stretching her body. I saw them, my wife and daughter. Drax said in a whisper. Nobody heard him, he looked at Naruto and felt like was looking at the god himself. What is this? You don't have to worry about me, now do you? Nebula said, tilting her head. With the display of your power, now I know that I'm not going anywhere. Good, Naruto said with tiny smile. Well guardians, I have good and bad news, he said, cogging their attention. The bad news is, you died. But the good news are that I've revived you. What? Quill exclaimed in shock. What do you mean, we're dead? Well, upon landing all of you hit your heads so hard that you died. Naruto explained simply, as if that was nothing. Then how come you and Nebula are still alive? Rocket pointed out. I'm pretty hard to kill. Naruto replied with smirk, causing Rocket to scoff. As for her, I don't know. It's because she's mostly android. Gamora explained, while getting up. Ready to attack her adoptive sister. Well being dead wasn't so bad. Quill said, getting up as well. I think I saw my mother. Suddenly everyone heard a sound coming from above. They thought it was Sovereign Fleet, but to their surprise it wasn't. It was a white round egg-shaped ship that was slowly landing before them. Everyone narrowed his eyes as the ship opened revealing two figures. First figure was a man in his sixties. He had long gray hair and beard. He was wearing green and silver suit with cape. He smiled, while narrowing his eyes at Quill. Second figure was a female wearing green suit. She had black short hair, large black irises and antennas on top of her forehead. She had small smile on her face. For unknown reason, Naruto saw Wanda in her. She seemed like kind person. After all those years, I finally found you. Man said with chuckle. Who the hell are you? Quill asked, glaring at the newcomers. I'm your dad, Peter. Man said, shocking everyone. Well that's awkward, Naruto thought with sweat drop. Until the evening, man called Ego and his servant Mantis helped them take everything important from what was left out of ship. Naruto was weary whenever he was close to Ego. He couldn't tell if he was a good guy or not. He appeared to be nice, but you never know. Better keep an eye on him. I hired Yondu when your mother passed away. Ego said, as they sat by the fire camp. But instead of returning you, Yondu kept you. I have no clue as to why. Oh I tell you why. 
It was because I was skinny and not to get into places that adults couldn't. Quill explained, narrowing his eyes at the man before him. Well I've been trying to track you ever since. Ego said, while taking a bite of his food. Now that they close to each other, I can feel the similar energies between them. Naruto thought, hiding his Sharingan with Genjutsu. But why is here right now? If he was tracking him, then how come he couldn't find him? If his and Quill race is similar to Otsutsuki then couldn't he sense his life force? This doesn't make any sense. Single quote. I thought that Yandu was your father. Drax said and everyone stared at him. Really, all this time you thought that Yandu was my father, Quill said in disbelief. You look exactly like him, Drax said, causing everyone to sweat drop. What, he's blue, Rocket blurted out. No, Yandu is not my father, Quill stated, his tone showing annoyance. He abducted me when I was kid. He kicked the shit out of me to learn me how to fight, so no one from his crew could eat a Tarian. Eat you, what's a Tarian? Naruto asked curious. He was a little disgusted about eating part though. It's term we use for earthlings. Ego explained. Now that I look at you, I didn't expect my son to be friend with Otsutsuki descendant. How do you know that I'm related to them? Naruto asked narrowing his eyes at Ego. I can feel the energy in you. Same as the Otsutsuki that I faced in my younger years. Ego explained. But you seem to be mostly human. Supremely you're quite strong to be able to reassure CT other being. How do you know that? I resurrected them before you arrived. Naruto inquired. I fought with two Otsutsukis before. Ego said with smile. I overdid it and one died. But his friend resurrected him second later. I see, Naruto said and was left in his thoughts. Hey, how about we'll go and visit my planet? Ego offered. There I can explain you, your special heritage. Finally get to be a father that I always wanted to be, he said to Quill. But first off, I need to go and take a leak. With that he get up and went to the bushes. Quill looked at both Naruto and Gamora. You're not buying it, right? He asked as Gamora glanced at Ego for a second. Let's go for a walk, Peter. Gamora said, surprising her leader. Naruto stay and keep an eye on Ego. Already on it, Naruto said with nod. My name is Mantis. Mantis introduced herself to Drax. Then she smiled awkwardly at him. What are you doing? Drax asked confused. Smiling. She replied shortly. I heard that this make people like you. You're trying too hard. Naruto said with chuckle. Oh, I've been raised on Planet Ego. She started. So I don't really understand social interaction. That make Naruto a bit sad. To be stuck on a planet with old man must be hard. Then she looked at Rocket. Can I pet your puppy? He's cute. At that Naruto snickered. Sure, go ahead. Naruto said with grin. Mantis reached Rocket head with her hand and pet him. Rocket quickly bite her. He yelled, causing Drax to laugh. That's a practical joke, Drax said, while laughing. Soon Mantis joined and start to laugh him. Thank you very much, Mantis said with large smile. Naruto smiled, while shaking his head. Mantis had a lot to learn, especially not to pet Rocket. Blonde glanced at Nebula and saw that she was clearly annoyed. He glanced at the food in front of him and chuckled. He dipped his spoon in the soup and then showed it to Nebula, who raised her non-existing eyebrow. What are you doing? Nebula asked, while narrowing his eyes at Naruto. Feeding you, Naruto said with shrug. It's been a couple of hours since you ate anything, right? Why would I ate this, soup? You could poison it, Nebula said, causing Naruto to chuckle. You seen me eating this. Beside, Gamora would kill me if I poison you, Naruto said with cheeky grin. Like she can kill a god, Nebula snorted, causing Naruto to let out a long sigh. Nebula, I'm not god, Naruto stated seriously. Nebula glare at him as he speaks. I'm just a man who wants to protect his friends and loved ones with too much power for his own good. That's what I am, Nebula looked down and then opened her mouth. Blonde smiled and feed her. Both Drax and Rocket stared at them, puzzled of what was going on. Why was Blonde feeding their payment? You should take with Gamora about your feelings. What are you talking about? Nebula asked, stopping at eating Naruto's soup. Your true feelings, I admit, 
You can hide them quite well but I'm a censor. Naruto said with chuckle. You feel, jealousy, Hayden, respect toward Gamora. You don't know anything about, Nebula spat at him. True, I do not know your full backstory. Naruto admitted, raising his hands in defeat. But, I know a few things from Gamora. You've been raised by a Thanos. The person I must stop one day. I know what he did to you is horrible and inhuman. All you wanted a family, sister, that's what Gamora is to you. A sister. Instead of fighting with your feelings you should tell her everything. She would never forgive me after all I done. Nebula said with hollow tone. Never say never. Keep trying. Proof that you want to change. Naruto said in serious tone. We could use help in fight with Thanos. Any intel about him is important. I don't think it will work since she wants to turn me in. Nebula shot back, causing Naruto to shake his head. She was quite stubborn, he thought. I'll talk with her then. Naruto promised with grin. You may not believe, but I'm quite persuasive guy. Why do you even care? She inquired, confused by all of this. Because family shouldn't be hating each other. Naruto explained. Granted, there is a lot of arguing, but in the end you forgive one another. Thanos raised you to be weapon, which remind me a lot of stories back in Shinobi era. They used to do that too. But even then, there was always a chance to change. To be better. And I believe that you can do that too. Just try. What's your name? Nebula asked and Naruto smirked. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto introduced himself and Nebula turn around, much to his amusement. So you can feel other people emotions? Mantis asked curiously. Are you empathic like me? You can say that, as a sensor, I can feel others energies and figure out how they feel. Naruto explained. You can do that too. Yes, but it works differently. Mantis said with tiny smile. I need to touch other person to do that. I can also change their emotion. Anger to happiness for example. Hey, that's pretty good. Naruto said with grin, causing Mantis to blush. T thank you very much. Mantis replied with awkward smile. Then Ego came back and start looking around. Where is Peter and Gamora? Ego asked. They went for a walk. Naruto said to Ego. They should be back pretty soon. Well okay, Ego said as he sat down. Next day, morning, closing square bracket. I'm not staying with the fox, Nebula protested. He's not a fox, Rocket is raccoon. Naruto said as he walked toward Groot. It'll just couple of days. We'll be back in flash. Why are you taking so much stuff? Gamora asked. Just in case if something happens. Drax replied with shrug. I hope your daddy is not much a censored like you. Rocket said to Quill who stared at him in disbelief. Geez, what's your problem? Quill asked. What is your goal, man? To make everyone hate you. At that Rocket gave him a glare. Because it's working. With that Quill, Gamora, Naruto and Drax head to Ego ship and enter it. Second later they flow toward the sky and faded into the distance. Ego ship. Closing square bracket. As group laid their luggage, Naruto examined the ship with his Sharingan. It was glowy and so clean that you could go blind. It wasn't as confusing as Guardian's ship. It seemed pretty simple in design. Naruto saw that Quill was staring at Ego, as Mantis put him into sleep. He took out a picture and saw a familiar actor. He wondered if that's how Quill mother pictured Star Lord Father. To Naruto he looked more like mix between Santa Claus and Kurt Russell. Can I ask you a personal question? Quill asked Mantis. Mantis perked up and smiled. No one has ever asked me a personal question. Mantis stated. Go ahead. Your antennas, what are they for? Quill pointed. Their purpose? Mantis asked unsure. Are they for feeling doorways? Drax asked, as Quill and Naruto facepalmed. You not supposed to say that? Naruto asked with sigh. I think, they have to do something with my emphatic abilities. Mantis explained and Quill raised his eyebrow. What are those? Gamora asked curiously. If I touch someone, I can feel their emotions and sometimes change them. Mantis said. Do you read minds? Quill asked. No, telepath do. Emphatics feel emotions. Naruto explained. That's right. Mantis agreed. May I? She asked Quill who shrugged. Upon touching Quill hand, her antennas lit up. You feel, love. 
Yeah yeah, I quess I feel general unselfish love for Sumbi, before he could finish, Mantis cut him off. No, romantic and sensorial love, Mantis said, while Quill start shaking his head. No no no, he start declining. For her, she pointed her finger at Gamora. Ha 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 ha. Both Drax and Naruto start to laugh together like maniacs. She just told your deepest darkest secret. Ha ha ha. Come on you guys. Quill whined, as Gamora tried to hold her giggle. I think you overreacting a little. You must be so embraced. Ha ha ha. Drax lauded, while pointing his finger at Quill. Do me, do me. Mantis did that and start laughing as well. She was a little confused, but very happy at the same time. Then she moved to Naruto and suddenly she stopped laughing. She stared at Naruto, as tears formed in her eyes. Naruto felt what was going on inside of Mantis' mind. When he'd been throat was a little intense. All those feeling at once, could destroy a person. My lord, I'm so sorry for what happened. Even thought she wasn't a telepath, Mantis could picture what Naruto been throat. Hey Mantis, it's okay. Naruto assured. I've throat this, so I'm good. But why, what about your wife and child? She asked confused. She wiped her tears and waited for his response. I'm sure they are safe. Naruto said with sad smile. It hurts me to be here, but I have mission to fulfill. What kind of mission? Mantis asked, tilting her head to the side. Is that impotent? Yes, I need to find three remaining infinity stones before Thanos will. Naruto explained. I only know the location of three of them. Two on my and Quill planet and one in Asgard. Asgard, aren't that place is connected to Nordic legends? Quill asked, remembering a little from his school days. Yeah, they just live in different plane of existence, Naruto explained. But they can come to our realm anytime they want. Well, we know location of one infinity stone, Gamora said and Naruto eyes winded. Really, where is it then? Naruto asked, staring at Gamora. It's on Xandar, protected by Nova Corp. Gamora explained. But I don't believe they will give it to you willingly. Like I care. Naruto snorted. I'll take it and they won't even realize. It it unwise. Quill said. I believe you're superhuman, but even you can't fight army. At that Naruto smirked. Or maybe you can. Well, how long before we'll reach Ego Planet? Naruto asked. Just two more hours. Mantis replied and everyone noted. Time to meditate, Naruto thought with smile. So, you created this planet, huh? Naruto asked, his tone filled with awe. Could he do something similar with his Rinnegan one day? Blonde knew he could basically create a moon with one jutsu. The entire planet looked like heaven. Everything was green and there many rock formations. Even a castle in the distance. Everybody, welcome to my world. Ego said, as they floated toward castle on big platform. Wow, you have your own planet, Quill asked shocked. Well, it's not larger than your Earth moon, Ego said and Blonde smirked. One day, he'll make his own planet. Stability, I like it, Drax said with nod. Then everyone saw floating orbs and Drax popped one. It exploded into smaller one in many colors. Ha ha ha, Naruto smiled as he glanced at setting sun. Eventually they stopped and then enter castle grounds. They came upon strange fountain with swimming fishes. I'm still curious guys, won't the fleet find rocket, Groot and Nebula? Naruto inquired, causing everyone to stop. Oh, I wouldn't be worried about your friends. Ego said with grin. I already dealt with their ships. Really? Gamora asked, raising her shave eyebrow. You own a planet and can defeat fleet without any help. What are you exactly? I'm what's called the Celestial, sweetheart. Ego replied and Gamora froze. Celestial like a god? Quill asked, also freezing. Well, it's long, gee, son. Ego said with smile. At least these days I feel humble as Drax. They all followed him to inside of the castle and they jaw dropped. Especially Naruto's. It was very hard to describe, but even Drax had to admit that Ego had a style. Not gonna lie, but this reminds me of Asgard Palace. Naruto said out loud. I don't know where I came from, Ego started, walking toward an open, egg, pod with brain floating inside of it. First thing I remember was flickering and drifting in cosmos, alone. 
He paused and gave a long sigh. Over the course of million years, I learned to control the molecules around me. I grow smarter and stronger. They walk to another egg pod. And I continue building from there. Layer by layer. The very planet you walk on, right now. Oh, but I wanted more. I desired. A meaning. They all walk to another pod. There must have been other life than me, I thought. And so, I sent myself with a task. I create of what I thought was biological life. To every detail. He paused with smirk on his face. He saw himself in the pod, much younger and more handsome than now. Did you make a penis? Drax asked curiously. Dude. Quill snapped, turning toward his weird teammate. What's wrong with you? Naruto said with deadpan, as Gamora sighed. If he's a planet, then how could he make a baby with your mom? Drax asked, causing Quill to facepalm. He would smash her. God, I don't need to hear that. Quill said, his cheeks turning red. I really don't want to image that. Why? My father would tell story of how he impregnated my mother. Drax said and everyone's sweat dropped. That's disgusting. Naruto said with shiver. What? It was beautiful. Drax said, as Quill was about to puke. Yes, Drax. I got a penis. Ego agreed, causing Drax to smirk. Thank you. Drax said. It's not half bad. Ego added and even Naruto was turning green from all of this. Yeah. I basically have everything that Peter does, Ego said. I truly wanted to experience life as a human. I went into a journey and, I found life. I was not alone in the universe anymore, he said with warm smile. When did you met with my mother, Quill asked. Not long after, he said, looking at his son with smile. They walked to another pod, showing Ego and Quill mother. It was with Meredith, that I first experienced true love. I call her my queen. Then it shone ego with pregnant Meredith. And from that love, came you, Peter. Naruto stared at the pod, before looking down and clenching his fist. He shouldn't be here. He should go back and return to his family. But, he has to find the stones first. If Thanos will do it before him, it'll endanger Earth and everyone else. Is everything okay? Gamora asked, seeing as Naruto looked depressed. Not really. I'm wasting my time here, Naruto said and everyone looked at him. I should be looking for the Infinity Stones. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but I have to head to Xandar now. Why do you need the stone for? Ego asked, curious. You know Thanos? Naruto asked and Ego noted. Yeah, he's looking for them. If he find all of them then everyone is doomed. This Nova Corp has won, so I have to go. Ken, I borrow your ship. Well. Since Peter and his friends are staying here for a while, I don't mind, Ego said with small smile. Go ahead, Mantis, set a course for Xandar. Once you'll be done, just press yellow button and you'll be back here. Thank you, Naruto thanked and bowed slightly. Ego noted and glanced at Mantis, who bowed to him. Follow me, please, Mantis said and Blonde followed her to the exit. I'll be back soon, Naruto shouted with grin on his face. Good luck, Quill shouted back with smile. Few minutes later, ego ship, closing square bracket. So, where will I land once I'm on Xandar? Naruto asked, sitting down. I don't believe ego's ship is one of the normals, right? You're right. Mantis said, programming the ship. You'll land no far away from the main city, undetected. Once you'll leave the ship, the cloaking mode will active. That's cool. Naruto said with smile. Do you know anything about Xandar? From our database, Xandar is the homeworld of the Xandarians, but is also home to many other species as the capital of the Nova Empire with a population of 12 billion. It is located in the Andromeda Galaxy at the eclipsing binary star M31 volts J004423264127800. That's all I really know. It's still kinda useful, thanks. Naruto noted. Everything is set. The ship is ready to go. Mantis informed. Just press this blue button, once I'll leave. Good luck on fitting Infinity Stone. Mantis said with smile, before leaving Naruto alone. Okay, let's go and get the Infinity Stone. Naruto exclaimed with smirk. He pressed blue button and felt that ship was taking off. Well, might as well do some meditation. 
Few hours later, Xandar, with Naruto, closing square bracket, Naruto opened his eyes as he felt that ship has landed. He got up and walked to the exit. Blonde walked out of the ship and saw a large city in the distance. He looked around and found himself in the mountains of the planet. This planet sure looks like futuristic Earth, Naruto said with whistle. Tony would be on Candy Rush in here, he thought sadly. Stop thinking about it, you need to get Infinity Stone, Naruto. Naruto suddenly vanished in Shunshin and head toward the city. Xandar Capital, Closing Square Bracket, Naruto walked among the people of Xandar. He couldn't believe of how many species of aliens were in here. Barely any human-like beings. He stopped once he saw a tall building with golden-like star. Excuse me, is this Nova Corp headquarters? Naruto asked nearby alien with tentacles instead of hairs. Yeah, they're police in here man. Alien said in hip-hop tone and then left. Thanks, Naruto said, even thought alien has left him. Let's see, what should I do? Walk in and say that I'm with the guardians. No, not even earth cops are that stupid. I quest I'll have to do this quietly. Need to find some guard. He whispered to himself and start looking around. Then he saw one with familiar symbol on his chest. Bingo, time to cause a little scene. Naruto made a single hand seal and whispered. Kurigakur no jutsu. Suddenly a very thick mist appeared out of nowhere. Everyone was confused and slowly start to panic. One of the guards tried to calm everyone, but he was quickly hit his neck. Vanishing in Shunshin, Naruto quickly appeared far away. He activated his Rinnegan and read the guard's mind. He knew now few things about specific location of the orb. Then he absorbed the guard into his Kamui. But before that he took his gun and ID. After that, Naruto quickly headed toward the Nova Corp headquarters. Without any problem, he sneak into their forces. Uzumaki had to admit that technology here was way more impressive than on Earth. He looked around to see if anyone was looking. Nobody. Perfect, he thought. Almost too perfect. He quietly made two shadow clones, impersonating two guards he seen by the entrance. He sent for the scout. Then Naruto spotted a woman in her late forties with what appeared to be the highest rank in the Nova Corp. That's the leader, Naruto thought with smile. She appeared to be a strong woman. He saluted to her as she passed by. Smirking, he sank into the ground to reappear in her office. No point of looking for hidden button. Blonde said to himself, as he scanned the office. He went to the nearby wall and passed through it. After entering another room, Blonde saw a big safe in the middle. Looking around, Naruto spotted what appeared to be a camera. With Sai he moved his eyes back on safe. He took out his gun and threw it toward the safe. It got cut into many pieces. Lasers, Naruto thought with irritation. With Sai he simply walked toward the safe, while using Kamui. He reached the safe and went into the safe with his upper half of body. He saw a small orb, no bigger than standard Rasengan. He smiled, while grabbing the orb. Blonde quickly went outside and gave a sensority smirk. Like stealing candy from a kid, he said to himself. Suddenly his senses kick in and there was large explosion to his right. Naruto quickly got behind the safe and waited. I know you're in there, pretender, I'd advise you to drop your transformation said a raspy voice with snarl. Naruto peek out to see two shadowy figures standing in cloud of dust. Or, I'll get you out myself. Suddenly, Naruto felt a movement and quickly jumped away to avoid being slashed in half. Then the alarm sounded throughout the entire HQ as the safe room began glowing in red color. Naruto hide the orb in his cloak and clapped his hands together. Releasing small large of wind chakra, Naruto was able to see him enemies properly now. One female and male. The male was about 5 feet 2 feet tall. He was wearing a black bodysuit with a cape and a hood. His skin was white and his face resembled that of a goblin. He had long back and gold spear in his right hand. The female was about 5 feet 3 feet tall. She was wearing a black and white bodysuit. Her entire left arm was armored and golden in color. Something that remind Naruto of Asgardian armor. The most of her head was covered by black material, leaving only her face to be visible. On that material was something that resembled a broken in half protractor. Who the hell are you two? Naruto demanded seriously. I'd ask the same thing, breath. Goblin-like creature asked. 
But it doesn't matter. Soon you'll be dead. Let him hear our name. At least he'll know from whom he died. Female said with smile toward her male companion. Right, right, have your way, dear, man said with glee. Naruto raised his eyebrow at surprise. He loved Wanda, but even he could admit that this female was good-looking person. On the other hand that goblin was ugly as night. Listen well, human, my name is Corvus Glaive, and my wife's name is Proxima Midnight. We're from the Black Order. Order of Thanos himself, Proxima exclaimed, causing Naruto eyes to widen. Hand over the Infinity Stone and you'll suffer painless death. Like hell heal, Corvus said, while licking his teeth. I want to enjoy spilling his blood. Sorry, but I quest we don't have time for that. Naruto said, activating his M's. Nova soldiers are coming toward us. So I'll keep the orb. Blonde suddenly realized something. He couldn't use his Mangekyu. Something was blocking him from using Kamui, then he heard Proxima smirking. Naruto saw her spear glowing in yellow color. What did she do to me? How is she blocking my Kamui? Naruto wondered, a small drop of sweat run down on temple. This wasn't good, now he wasn't able to pass throat objects or bring that guard back to this dimension. On top of that, Corvus is probably as fast as him. If somehow they can block his abilities, then he has get away from them. Or get rid of that spear. Suddenly Nova soldiers bursted into the room, guns ready to shoot anyone. On the authority of the Nova Corp, I command you to drop everything your weapons and put your hands behind your back, one of soldiers exclaimed. It was probably the chief. I won't repeat myself. Do as I say. Dear, can I butcher them? Corvus asked sweetly, causing his wife to chuckle. Go ahead, I'll deal with the blondie, Proxima said, as her husband turned toward the soldiers and grinned. He launched himself at the guards with mania call laughed. Face it, you won't be able to run. You somehow blocked my ability to teleport, but that doesn't mean you block my other powers, Naruto said taking his fighting stance. His M's reverted back to the standard Sharingan. The two stared at each other, before blurring out. They connected their fists, causing a small shockwave. Not bad, Naruto commented. Can say the same about you, Proxima said with sensority smirk. They quickly went into fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. Though, Naruto Sharingan proved to be able to predict her movements, she was still faster. Because of that, Naruto was only able to block her attack in last second. Is that all? Not a chance. Naruto shot back, while jumping away and waving series of hand seals. Fudin. Daitapa, he exclaimed, before sending a powerful gust of wind toward her. She was able to withstand it though. So, Naruto created bunch of shadow clones and they all charged at Proxima. How about that, surely, you can't fight with so many enemies, he stated, trying to buy himself some time. He glanced at Corvus who was still killing incoming soldiers. I need to help them, he thought, creating more clones and charging at Corvus who sniffed the air around him. Corvus quickly turned around and slashed the first four clones, causing them to poof out of the existence. Honestly, you're too stubborn, Corvus said with snur. Just give up and accept your death. Never, those men and women didn't diverse to die like that, one of the clones exclaimed. You're just a beast, who's hungry of blood? Other clones snarled, charging at Corvus with Rasengan. But Corvus simply smirked and dogged it incoming clone. Then he simply run by all of them at superb speed. Naruto barely nosseted as his stomach was cut. Quickly retreating, Naruto performed a medical just you on himself. Ah man, so you can heal yourself, huh? Corvus said with sigh. What a drag, Naruto smirked, while staring at trapped Corvus. So, how are you going to get out now? Naruto asked smugly, while smiling. This piece of crap, it's a wood, I'll just cut it. Corvus replied with snort. He made quick slash, but would prison withstand the attack. Now that's something. Now, I have to deal with your wife, Naruto said turning away. If you excuse me, before he left, Naruto heard Corvus chuckling. What's so funny, I am done with you, so I'm coming after your wife. You should have been worried, at least a little. I don't have to, Corvus said, shaking his head. We already won. Yeah. How come? Naruto asked. 
Suddenly the roof above them exploded and Naruto dodged the falling debris. In the dust, Naruto saw a large figure gracefully landing in front of the cage. Blonde heard snap of the finger and felt that his wood prison was destroyed. Naruto saw something glowing in red color. It had the shape of a gem, shit. Naruto was blasted back to the safe room. He hit the wall hard, causing him to spat some blood. After hitting the ground, Naruto lift up his head up to see the figure coming toward him. Haven't I killed you few decades ago? Figure said in deep tone of confusion. So, you're Thanos? Naruto asked, slowly getting up. He already has one of the infinity stones. Ah, I see now. You're that couple's child, right? Thanos asked, after stepping out of the dust to reveal himself in full glory. To think a Tarian would wander so deep into the galaxy. But then again, they're the Star Lord. Let me quest, you want to stop me from getting the Power Stone. You're just like your parents. Shut up, where did you get that red stone? Naruto demanded. If Thanos already has one then. You mean the reality stone? Thanos said and glanced at his gauntlet. Only one of the six spots was filled. It was quite easy. The collector was too scared to say anything, so I had to help myself. Suddenly both Corvus and Proxima appeared next to Thanos. We're done, my lord, Proxima said with smirk. Then Corvus took the orb out of his cloths, causing Naruto to gasp. Here is the orb, Corvus said, handing Thanos the said orb. The tyrant took out the stone and put on the gauntlet. No, how did you, Naruto said in total shock, checking his pockets. He was sure that the orb was still there. When? When you send that clones, I passed you, don't you remember? Corvus asked with sick grin plastered across his face. A quick memory rushed throat his brain. He was right, for some reason he passed him rather than killing him. You're not half bad, but you gotta work harder to defeat us. Why are you telling him that? Proxima asked, while narrowing her eyes at her husband. It's not like he's gonna to live another minute. That's my chance, if she's distracted. I might be able to use Kamui. Naruto said, swifting his Sharingan to Eternal Mangekyu Sharingan. I've already lost, no point staying and dying here. Single quote. As he slowly start to sink into the floor, there was a huge blast right next to Thanos and his Black Order. After dust cleared out, there was a horde of Nova ships. Thanos, in the name of Nova Corp, we are arresting you for tyranny and attack on our base of organization. If you try anything reckless, we'll shoot you down. What a fool, haha, ha, Corvus said with laughed. How are you going to kill him, my lord? Let's just get rid of them and everyone else, Thanos said blankly as he reached his gauntlet. Reality stone glowed in bright color, causing Thanos to smile. Suddenly a mini black hole appeared in the middle of the horde of ships. It quickly absorbed the ships around it and got bigger. Let's get out of here then, Thanos said with sigh while creating a safety bubble around himself and his minions. Naruto quickly got away from the building and landed on the ground. He was staring at the growing black hole started absorbing Nova headquarters. He heard screams and alarms all around him. Even few aliens being absorbed by the black hole. It's my fault, if I wasn't here, this would not happened. Naruto thought with gulp, maybe Thanos wouldn't created this black hole. He had to stop it. If not, everyone will die. But, can I do it? No, I will do it. I don't have any other choice. Naruto clapped his hands together and thick orange cloak formed on his body. He still had some of Kurama and Gyuki chakra in him. He'll put that chakra into good use. He unlocked Sage of Six Path Mode. Nine truth seeking orbs formed behind his back. His Rinnegan gained six tomos, signalizing its full power. You're not the only one with reality shifting power at your disposal, Naruto exclaimed as his both palm flamed on. One in blue color, while the other in red. Banbutsu Sozo no Jutsu, four of nine true seeking orbs floated toward his palms. On pair start glowing in red, while second in blue. Goo, he shouted as true seeking orbs charged toward black hole at full speed. Upon touching the black hole, there was a blinding light which consumed everything on its path. Few hours later, closing square bracket, slowly, Naruto opened his pitch black eyes and blinked. He saw blue sky with sun still up. His eyes moved to the right and left. Well, he was screwed. 
surrounded by soldiers, who were pointing their guns at him. I see you're awake, a strong female voice said with snort. You have a lot to answer. Barani, can your soldiers put their weapons down? Naruto asked, slowly getting up. That'd be just waste of ammo in my opinion. How dare you, speak with respect toward Nova Prime, one of the soldiers yelled toward Naruto. Blonde simply stared at him with his Sharingan spinning, causing soldier to gulp. Be on the standby, Arani said to her men. Slowly, Naruto get back on feet and meet with Arani eye to eye. So, what did you wanted to do with the orb? Hide it away from Thanos, Naruto replied. Sadly, I haven't taken on the account that he'd send skilled assassins and already be in the possession of Infinity Stone. I am deeply sorry for your soldiers. Well, being sorry won't bring them back. Arani shot back, clearly pissed. Have you recover any of bodies? Naruto asked in low tone. Yes, about fifteen of my people. Arani replied with tired sigh. Fortunately, nobody else died in attack. Can you show me where they are? Naruto said in serious tone. I still have some biju chakra left after destroying that black hole. Single quote. What can you do? Bring them back. Arani said with hollow chuckle. Basically, yeah, I just stopped Black Hole from eating this planet, Naruto said with deadpan. Are you really doubting my power? She didn't say anything, Arani showed Naruto the way. After few seconds of walking, Naruto saw a pile of bodies. If you can bring back dead too, then why haven't you stopped Thanos? Arani asked with mock. Few days ago, I got a deadly virus. Then I was in space for some time before Guardians of the Galaxy saw fed me, Naruto explained. Would you be at 100% after something that? Beside, I don't know that much about your galaxy. You probably know that Tarians are not as advanced as you. You know Quill and the rest? Arani asked and Blonde noted. Who knows, maybe I can trust you. Give me some space. Naruto and Arani point her soldiers to fall back. He clapped his hands together and enter six paths sage mode. Suddenly King of Hell rose from the ground. Naruto Rinnegan glowed in bright purple color. Ghetto. Rinne Tensai no Jutsu. Green souls came out of the King of Hell mouth and wandered toward dead bodies. After entering their bodies, the soldiers slowly opened their eyes causing everyone to gasp in shock and awe. Whoa, that was easier than before. Naruto thought as his cloak vanished. It only took four tenths of chakra this time, if you don't count Biju chakra. Single quote. I can't believe my eyes. Arani said, while looking at the raising soldiers. Are you? No, I'm not a god. Naruto replied quickly. I'm just a human with too much power for my own good. I'm sorry, but I can't waste more time. I need to get back to Guardians of Galaxy. Then I won't be stopping you. Arani said with tiny smile. If you have power to stop Thanos, then I'll have to entrust you with this mission. If you need help, then contact us. Thank you. Naruto said with grin. Then he was absorbed by the vortex and vanished from the sight. Ego. Some time later. Closing square bracket. What won't you trust him? Quill asked in annoyed tone. My dad's cool. I don't know where your suspiciousness came from. Quill couldn't be happier. He finally found his dad that his mom was so eager to talk about. He was great guy. They even bonded by throwing energy orbs to each other. Peter was able to tap into his inner power as half celestial thanks to ego. As a kid he wished to have superpowers. And now about 30 years later, he has them. But then Gamora came and started questioning if they should trust him. It made him so mad that he almost released his power in the room. It scared her a little. Listen, Peter. Gamora started gently. You know him for about a day. I'm just saying that you shouldn't trust this much. Something is wrong. My guts tell me that. At that Quill snorted. We need to be on our guard. Remember, we have to get back to Rocket, Groot and our payment. I don't have to listen to that. Peter snarled and walked out of the room. Gamora just stood there and was watched him leaving. She looked down and gave a long sigh. I have to go and look around. Gamora thought then she jumped through the window. Sometime later, with Naruto. Closing square bracket. Come on. Naruto shouted, slamming his hand on the panel of Ego ship. Go faster. I can't waste my time any longer. 
He had to get back to Guardians and warn them. Thanos already have two Infinity Stones. He must get back to Earth and fast as he could. Naruto must contact with Avengers and the Ancient One. She was an old friend of Naruto. He helped her and she helped him. From what he could gather, the Ancient One was in the possession of Infinity Stone. He wouldn't dare and try to steal it. Ancient One was way stronger than him at that time. She'd send him to Dark Dimension. Even with his time and space ninjutsu, Naruto wouldn't be able to get out of there that easily. Suddenly, Naruto came out of Hyper Jump and saw Planet Ego. He smiled a little. At last, he thought. Then out of nowhere, something really hard his ship, setting it off the course. Whole ship start to spin like a rolling barrel. It slowly made him sick. What the censored happened? He screamed as the ship went into the atmosphere. Ravenger's ship, with Rocket, Groot, Yondu and Kraglin. Closing square bracket. Ouch, that hurt as hell. Rocket groaned, while holding his stomach. If y'all ever gonna do something like that, I'm gonna skin ya. Yondu said nursing his head. I am Groot, Groot groaned after puking. Are we done? Kraglin after lifting his head up. He puked a lot after they stopped. Because my stomach won't handle this any longer. Yeah, let's get into the atmosphere and find Quill. Rocket said jumping off from the pilot chair. You know, Peter, all of this, including this Gamora, is temporary. Ego said as they enter the main part of the palace. We have, eternity. But that must be boring after some time, right? Quill asked. Not if you have a purpose, boy. Ego said with smile. In a moment, I'll show you everything. I've told that long ago I had inner need to, find life. But I haven't told you that once I found it, I felt really, disappointed. He finished with sigh. And then I realized, in a blink of an eye, everything was clear. My inner desire of finding life wasn't from wishing to be part of it. Son, he paused and loke Quill in the eyes. This is my purpose. With that, Ego place his fingers on Quill Ofrihead. His eyes start to pulse and change colors from white to black. With Naruto, as Naruto was on his way, he sensed something happening to Quill Chakra. Then he looked to his left and saw two familiar figures. Gamora and Nebula, why was Nebula on Ego? He quickly performed Shunshun and appeared in front of Thanos' daughters. Naruto, Gamora asked in surprise. You're already here. Yeah, Naruto replied with nod. Nebula, how did you end up here? It doesn't concern you. Nebula replied, while looking away. What's happening with Quill? Naruto asked. Something is wrong with his chakra. It's acting like crazy. I don't know. We have to go and help him. Gamora said seriously. Then we'll see what happened to Rocket and Groot. Grab onto me. Naruto said seriously. I'll transport you to the castle. A little unsure, both Gamora and Nebula grabbed Naruto coat. Soon their vision start spinning and their bodies were absorbed into Naruto pocket dimension. Second later, Naruto appeared with women in palace. They saw both Drax and Mantis in front of them. Thank goodness, Mantis said relieved. Listen I. Before she could finish her sentence, Gamora grabbed Mantis throat and pinned her to the wall. Hold your horses Gamora, Naruto shouted, while marching to her. What the hell are you doing? She needs to explain everything. She sneered at old shinobi. Why there are skeletons of aliens on the planet? What are you talking about? Naruto asked shocked. On our way, we found bunch of skeletons. Gamora quickly explained. Explain this. Without a warning, Mantis touched Gamora's forehead. It caused her to drop Mantis while taking deep breaths. What did she do to me? We need to save Peter. Mantis said to everyone in the room. Ego wants to use him for his genetics. Suddenly the whole palace shaked for a second. If we won't stop him, it'll be over for everyone, Mantis explained. Naruto's eyes shifted to M's and he quickly sank into the floor. Then let's not waste any more time, Drax said. Come on, we have to go. Why do you even bother? Nebula asked, bringing everyone attention. He's a god, Uzumaki can handle this. We won't abond our friend, Gamora said OT her adoptive sister. All you do is scream at each other. Nebula snorted. You're not friends. We are family, Drax said and looked at Nebula. Except maybe you. With Quill and Ego. Closing square bracket. It's beautiful, Quill said whole looking around. 
His eyes shined like the brightest star on the sky. Over the hundreds of years of planeted my extension on every planet. Ego started with smile. Until everything, will be me. One celestial is not enough to do it. He paused and glanced at Quill's dreamy face. But two celestials, that just might do. I had many lovers, but none of my children had celestial gens. Each time, I hired Yondu to bring them to me, but they failed. Only you have celestials gens, Peter, he said with small smile. For the first time in my existence, I am not truly alone, at that Quill looked at him with sad eyes. What about my friends? Quill asked slowly. That caused Ego to bit his lips. I see, well that the mortal you, Ego explained. Once you'll become God, you won't be worried about them. You, said that you loved my mother, Quill stated, while looking down at the floor. Yes, I did, but if I'd stay longer, I'd give up on my goal, Ego admitted. It broke my hair at putting a tumor in her head, suddenly Quill eyes start shining. Then Naruto dropped from above and landed next to Quill. Sorry for breaking this lovely father-son talk, but, Naruto paused and stared at Ego with his M's spinning like crazy. I won't let you, hurt my family, or anyone else on earth. Out of blue, Quill took his blasters and start shooting Ego. His body got destroyed, but he quickly regenerated. Then his eyes start shining again and his hands start glowing in bright blue color. I'll kill you, Quill roared on top of his lungs. Well, he's pissed. Naruto whispered and smirked. It's two against one, pretty bad odds. For you, brats, Ego said enraged. Suddenly, Naruto heard something coming. He looked up to see incoming ship. He quickly grabbed Quill's shoulder and activated his Kamui. The ship blasted through the window and hit Ego while Naruto and Quill were safe. Then Gamora, Mantis, Drax and Nebula came to the hull and went to the ship. Naruto and Quill quickly got in as well. You almost killed Quill and Naruto, Drax shouted at Rocket. How about a little, thank you, Rocket retorted. Everything's under control. No, you're wrong, Mantis said. You only destroyed his avatar. He'll come back soon. So we have to find his weak spot. Naruto said to Guardians. If he's a planet, then Ego must have its core. That's correct, Mantis exclaimed. If you want to destroy Ego then that's your only way. You heard them Yondu, Quill said to Yondu. Next course, Ego's core. Hey, you ain't my boss, Yondu said to Peter. But alright, I wanna kill this bastard as well. With that Naruto and Guardians left the palace and head for the core. On their way, they swrom by sovereign ships. Come on, can't they leave us alone? Naruto whined. You just had to stole those damn batteries. Leave me be, Rocket shouted at Blonde. Stop whining and use those crazy powers of yours. Go, we'll deal with Ego. Gamora said and Naruto noted. He rushed to the hole in the ship and jumped from it. He crossed his fingers and grinned. Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Dozen of clones pop into the existence with already charged Rasengans. Rasenrengan, they exclaimed, blowing many sovereign ship in the process. Naruto landed on some rick structure and looked at another horde of ships. Blonde smiled and activated his M's. Let's see, Amaterasu, Naruto exclaimed and wave of black flames cover incoming ships. All of them melt upon contact. You gotta do better than that. Soon rest of the ships appeared and caused Naruto and his clones to laugh. Give up, you won't win this fight, one of the clones shouted, while throwing Rasenshuriken at the ships. So pathetic, his eyes shifted to Rinnegan, as he lift his arm. Shinra Tensai, an invisible wave crushed the entrace to the core. Maybe that will keep them away. I'm too lazy to write the rest, so I'll go straight to the point where they save Peter and retrieve Yondu body. Slash closing square bracket. Ravenger's ship, Yondu funeral, closing square bracket. You're sure you don't want me to revive him? Naruto asked Quill, after they finished. I don't think he'd want that. Rocket said, catching blonde attention. Before he went to save Peter, Yondu told that he wanted to do one good thing in his life. Saving his son life, I quest you just made him mad. His sacrifice proved that, he cared for more than I thought. Peter said slowly, Rocket's right, he'd damn mad if you revived him just to learn he didn't had to. I quest that, 
David Hasselhoff didn't kinda end up being my dad after all. It was you, Yondu. He paused, looking down on Yodu's body. Tears streaming from his eyes. Gamora placed her hand on his shoulder to support him. I had pretty cool dad. What I was trying to say was, that sometimes, thing you're looking for your whole life, is right by your side all along. And you don't even know it. Gamora saw as Nebula left them. She quickly rushed toward her. Nobody followed her. Quill picked up Yodu body and went to dispose it. Alone. Naruto looked at the depths of space. What are you thinking about? Mantis asked and Naruto glanced at her. About my life, back on Earth. Naruto replied. About my friends and family. I see, is it beautiful? The Earth? Mantis asked curiously. For the most part, yes. Naruto replied with small smile. But, there is also the dark side. Humanity, part of it is corrupted. By power, money, drugs and other things. Once, I believe that there will come a day when people will understand each other. That there won't be any conflict or war. But I'm constantly reminded on how wrong I was, it's part of every species. Fighting for power in order to survive. I know that now. So, what's the plan? Quill asked and Naruto turned around to face him. Want us to drop you on Earth? No, not yet. Naruto said. First we need to find last Infinity Stone. Not to break your spirit or anything, but, where do we even begin? Rocket asked. And if I'm right then we have two stones to find, not one. I know the location of three Infinity Stones. Naruto started. Two Infinity Stones are on Earth, while the third is in Asgard. Even so, where do we begin? Gamora asked. I mean the Collector lost his Infinity Stone. D doesn't know where the rest is. Does the Collector know anyone else who might have some information? Drax asked. I'm not sure, but maybe his brother does. Gamora said, nodding with her head. The Grand Master, he might know something. So you know where he is? Naruto asked seriously. Yeah, let's take one of the ships. Quill said, grabbing his coat and head to the hangar. Can I come with you? Kraglin hopefully asked. No, somebody must stay on the ship. Quill said seriously. Guard the ship and if you can go and pick up our ship on Burhurt. Let's go then. Naruto said as he follow Guardians of the Galaxy. Some time later, closing square bracket, we're arriving. Mantis Anust. All right, Guardians, don't forget this might be dangerous so let's put on our mean faces. Quill said to the team. Where is Naruto and Groot? Blondie said that he wanted to help Groot with something. Rocket replied. Don't know what and I don't really want to know. Once they come from Hyperjump, Guardians saw devastation. Where supposed to be a planet, now was an asteroid field. Suddenly someone landed on their windshield. Wipers, wipers, get it off. Rocket growled. Okay then, let's bring him in. Gamora said. Maybe this guy knows something. Few minutes later, closing square bracket. Okay, so you have another guy from space. Naruto asked as he and Team Groot walked toward Guardians. What happened to Groot? Asked a little bit shocked Rocket. Helped him grow up. Naruto explained. We need him at his full potential. So, what about this guy? Blonde walked to table where Guardians place unknown man. Upon seeing man's face, Naruto own face paled. Thor, he exclaimed, surprising the Guardians. You know this guy? Gamora asked. Yes, minus short hair. That's Thor, son of Asgard and Avenger, Naruto, examining Thor body. He was badly beaten. He had a hell of a battle, Naruto thought. Let me heal his wounds first. After few seconds of blue glowing hands on Thor, Naruto moved his hands off and gave Mantis a sign. Wait, Mantis whispered as she put her hand on Thor's head. As if his brain was electrocuted, Thor gasped and jumped from the table to floor. Everything okay, Thor. It's me. After hearing familiar voice, God of Thunder turn around to see Naruto and some unknown people, Raccoonen. A tree. You're safe now. Calm down Oki. Naruto, what are you doing here? Thor slowly asked, while glaring at people behind Naruto. And who are they? A lot of things happened when you're in Asgard. Naruto started. But I quest same goes for you, it'll take a while, but I'll explain everything to you. Oki, sure. Thor as his breath calmed down. 
Thanks.